Hey YouTube, welcome to the IPv4 Subnet Mastery video series. Welcome to video 5. In this video, we will show you some tricks to help you solve subnetting problems quicker. This video is all about showing you how to solve for the 7 attributes faster. Before watching this video, you must have already watched at least video 1 to describe what each of the 7 attributes are, and video 3 to understand the 7 steps to solve for each attribute. I also highly recommend to have watched video 2 to understand how to draw the cheat sheet, and video 4 to get more practice using the cheat sheet. With that said, let's show you 4 tips to increase your subnetting speed. We will demonstrate the first speed tip using the problem 10.3.3.85-29. It'll start like any other problem. We are provided a slash 29 which puts us in this column. The column provides a subnet row of 248 and a group size of 8, which gives us our subnet mask and total number of addresses. Solving for these two attributes cannot be made any quicker, as they are simply reading numbers from the cheat sheet. We are provided a group size of 8, which means we would start at dot .0 and increment by 8 until we pass our target IP of .85. Dot .0, dot .8, dot .16, dot .24, dot .32, dot .40. We could continue, but it would take a long time to get to 85, which brings us to our first speed tip. To save time, the group size can be multiplied by 10. We don't have to start at dot .0. If we're incrementing by sets of 8, we know at some point we will land on 80. We can save time by simply starting there, then continue to increment by 8. Once we've hit .88, we've passed our target IP of .85, and we can stop. From here, the process continues as normal. The numbers before and after our target IP are our network ID and next network. The next network minus 1 is the broadcast IP. Our first and last host are the numbers after the network ID and before the broadcast IP. And just like that, we've solved for all seven attributes. Let's backtrack a bit and imagine our problem was 10.3.3.170/29. The group size and mass didn't change, so those answers are still accurate. But we are now in a new subnetwork, and therefore have different answers for the remaining attributes. We were able to use speed tip number one to jump to dot .80, and then we continued incrementing by eight. But as you can see, to get to dot .170, even starting at dot .80 would take a long time. So there's a second part to speed tip number one. We can multiply the group size by 10, then we can double or triple as necessary to get us closer to our target IP, which means from dot 80, I can go directly to dot 160, then continue incrementing by eight to dot 168, then dot 176, and at that point, we've passed our target IP. From here, we just fill in all the attributes, adding or subtracting one as necessary, just like we've done many times before. So speed tip number one is that the group size can be multiplied by 10, then doubled or tripled as necessary so you can start your increments as close to the target IP as possible. Remember, once you've doubled or tripled, you must continue to increment by the group size until you pass the target IP. To demonstrate the second speed tip, we will solve the seven attributes for 10.3.3.147-28. It'll start like any other problem. The provided cider of slash 28 puts us in this column, which gives us a sub mask of dot .240 and a total number of addresses of 16. Normally, we would start at dot zero and continue incrementing by 16 until we pass 147. But as you can tell, this could take a long time. We could try to use speed tip number one, which has us multiply the group size by 10, but that puts us too far since we've already passed the target IP. Which brings us to speed tip number two. Regardless of what you're using as your increment, every group size will at some point or another land on dot 128. Which means if I'm solving for a target IP above 128, I don't need to start at dot zero. I can simply start at dot 128 and continue incrementing by my group size from here. Our group size was 16, so we would continue with dot 144, then dot 160, and at this point we've passed our target IP. From here, everything continues as we've done before. The numbers on either side of where our target IP would be are the network ID and the next network. The IP before the next network is the broadcast, and the first and last hosts are the IPs before and after the network ID and broadcast. Speed tip number two reveals that every increment will at some point or another land on dot 128. Our third problem is 10.3.3.197/30. This IPN mask will demonstrate speed tip number three for us. Just like any other problem, the CIDR notation will determine our column, and our column will reveal the subnet mask and total number of addresses. Normally, we would start at dot zero and increment by four until we pass 197. But obviously, that would take a very long time. We could use speed tip number one, which has us multiply our group size of four by 10, allowing us to start at dot 40, then continue by doubling and tripling, but even that would take longer than necessary. We could try speed tip number two and start at dot 128, 
but incrementing by sets of 4 from there would still take a very long time to get to 197. Which brings us to our next speed tip. Speed tip number 3 is that every group size increment will eventually land on its own subnet mask value or every subnet mask value to the left. Which means our increment of 4 will at some point land on 252 or 248 or 240 and so on. All we then have to do is to find the closest value to our target IP, which for us is 192. So we'll start at dot 192 and continue incrementing by our group size of 4 to get us to dot 196, then dot 200, and here we have passed our group size of 197. At this point, we've done the hard part and we can now fill in all the remaining values the same way we always have. Dot 196 and dot 200 are our network ID and next network. Dot 199 is the broadcast IP and dot 197 and dot 198 are our first and last host IP. This is probably my favorite speed tip. It can save you a lot of time to jump straight to the subnet value in your cheat sheet column or any column to the left. Which brings us to our final speed tip and problem. As any other problem, the CIDR reveals the column and the column reveals the subnet mask and number of IP addresses. Again, we absolutely could solve this the normal way by starting at dot zero and incrementing by the group size of eight until we pass the target IP of dot 117, but that would of course take up additional time. We could try speed tip number one and multiply the group size by 10 and then double it, but we have to be careful here. It may appear like we've successfully passed the target IP, but if we tried to continue from here, we would get incorrect attributes. The increment we use to actually pass the target IP must be by the group size. Our group size was eight, but this particular increment was a jump of 80 IP addresses, so going to a dot 160 takes us too far. We could have incremented by 8 from dot 80, and while that would work, it would also take a long time. Speed tip number 2 and 3 would allow us to start at dot 128, but that is already higher than dot 117, which brings us to speed tip number 4. Our final speed tip is that you can start higher, then subtract by the group size. If we know we will land on dot 128, we can start there, then decrement by the group size, giving us dot 120. We can continue to do that until we pass the target IP. The next decrement would be dot 112. And here, we found the block of eight IP addresses which include our target IP. Once we've found the block, we can solve everything else just like normal. The number lower than our target IP is the network ID. The number higher than our target IP is the next network. The IP before that one is the broadcast IP. The numbers immediately before and after the network ID and broadcast are our first and last host. Our last speed tip is that you can start higher than the target IP and decrement by the group size until you find the specific group size increment that contains your target IP. In this video, we solved for all seven attributes of subnetting for five more problems. We did this using four speed tips that'll help you solve subnetting problems lightning quick. With these speed tips and a little practice, you can easily get to solving subnetting problems well within the 60 seconds this video series projects possibly even as fast as 10 seconds or less.